Hi everyone, my name is Genevieve Avers. The person I will be interviewing today is my grandmother, Elizabeth Sayers. She's 83 years old and has lived in the United States for around 60 years. When she was 23 years old, she traveled all the way from, the United, from Scotland to the United States. I chose my grandmother because I adore her and her stories, and she's a very intelligent woman who's been through and seen a lot of things in her life. Funny story, she saw Queen Elizabeth coronation on a little black and white TV. That was 70 years ago. She just saw King Charles' coronation on a much bigger TV, as she said. The topics I've chosen for me and my grandma to talk about is the topic of the world. I chose this topic because my grandmother is, has always been an adventurous person. She loves seeing the world, she loves exploring, and she's also explored all of Scotland. She was about 21 when she first went and explored Scotland, and that was because she couldn't afford anything out of, out of Scotland. So she chose to explore and see what other things in Scotland she could do. The second topic we talk about is death. Death is a big topic in her life because she has she always took care of children with disabilities or sicknesses. And because her mother and sister had passed away. So I would like to know how she coped and dealt with all those feelings in her life. The last topic I chose was the fear of aging and marriage. The reason I chose this topic is because my grandmother is an older woman who's been here for eight decades. And I wonder what the I wonder what the good and bad things about aging are and if she, if she regrets anything as she gets older. And about marriage, because I never really got to know anything about my grandpa and I would love to know more about how they met. Well, enjoy the interview. Hi everyone, so this is my grandmother, Elizabeth Zayas, and today we'll be talking about the world. You lived in Scotland for how many years? 23. 23 years. Why did you decide to come to the United States? Well, I needed a little adventure. I did not have a lot of money, so I got a job here who sponsored me there, and that's how I came. Do you have any stories? Like, how, did, like, how long was the journey over here? Well, I got on a jet propelled plane, not a jet plane, a jet KLM, and it took us about 12 hours on a flight. Um, yeah, it was long. Were coming over here, did you come alone or did you come I alone? came alone, but it wasn't my original intent. I was supposed to come with a friend who at the last minute backed out and I didn't want to. But. I was coming here not to strangers or to perhaps strangers, but it was a friend. I had a pen pal here. Oh, so you had family here? Not family, a friend that I wrote to for years. And they met me at the airport. Did you live with them immediately? No, I came straight to the hospital and got uh, in the nurses' quarters. They had nurses' quarters in those days. And I came here and then. I had to go and get a certificate of intention, not naturalization, but I had to declare that I intended to become a citizen. And I had to go on for a social security number. And I had to do all that downtown, which was incredible. Because I got to see downtown New York. And my first impression as I came into the airport was where are all the skyscrapers but the airport was far away so, so when you came to the united states for the first time you expected to see skyscrapers like, like if you big just... tall buildings yeah that's what i was looking for i didn't see any i just saw little houses and because didn't you say that it was in the suburb area? Yes. The, well the airport is out in the suburbs in new york it wasn't LaGuardia. it was they called it Idle Wild at that time, but it got changed to JF Kennedy. And that all. Now, I was only here, I came in September, and I was only here three months, October, November, when the president was killed. And I was working in the hospital at the time. And my poor mother thought everybody had guns. She was very afraid. But at least I remember where I was when JF came. Well, that's a long time. Yeah. How long ago was that? 20, oh, 60 no, years that's, ago? Uh, yeah, 60 years ago. 60 years ago. It'll be 60 years this November. Of course, I didn't 
ever see him and but we were glued to the television and at that point there were no commercials there were no commercials it was just nothing but him and then when i was watching tv we saw the guy i can't remember his name came out and shoot who shot jf Kennedy. so you watched it on tv i watched it on tv the shooting it, he was getting pulled out of jail and somebody came and go Phew. right in front of the tv we were all shocked yeah. i can't even imagine like your reaction to yeah. That. yeah i can't imagine that nobody could believe it it was incredible but this country's always had a problem with guns and i think something got you no because in scotland we've never heard of guns please don't carry guns i never i didn't How was Scotland? Like you never really talk about it. Scotland is beautiful, but very cold, and the food is terrible. Now the food is a lot better because there's been an influx of Indian, Chinese, Malayan influences. But when I was little, the food had no flavor whatsoever. Well, so. Yeah. You, so when you came here and you tried all the different types of food that are here well, with flavor? Yeah, well, my first love was turkey. Oh, I would love going to a diner and I would always order turkey. Because I never had tasted chicken, yes, but not turkey. And yeah, it was, I couldn't imagine it. It was incredible the size of the portions that they would feed you. You didn't get that in Scotland. So the second topic we're going to talk about is death. And I know you, you've been, you, you're 83 years old, so you've seen a lot. Yeah. Um, how did you feel when your mother passed away? Was it hard on you? Like, it was, but she was 99 years old and she had lived a full life. And she was getting a little bit difficult to move around. So I must, I really had left the country by then and that was quite a few years that I had been without her. So the, the effect wasn't as bad as if I had been there all the time. Yeah. But I was still sad, but at 99, you know, we're living over our years of so pushing you. Yeah. yeah. He said three score years and 10, which is 70. Anytime over 70, you're on borrowed time. What the heck? I didn't know that. Yeah, well, that's what they say. And how come your mom didn't come with you? Oh, my mother and father wouldn't come. They were perfectly happy with wherever they stayed. It was me that wanted the adventure. My sister didn't come. My mother came several times to visit, but they never intended to stay. Yeah. They were Scottish, pure and pure. None of them ever married outside a Scotsman until me. I married Cuban. I really messed up the heritage. <laughs> well hey, you got you got me? Yep. And I have three children, ten grandchildren, and seven great grandchildren. I love them all. Wow, that's right. Um I, like I said, since you're older, how did you, how do you get over a death of a loved one? Like, besides your mom, and It's you not easy. It's, there's no easy way around it. You just grieve. There is an end. You do eventually hope, but it's not easy. Unfortunately, you have to go through a lot of stages to get over it. Right. And you do if you keep living, and especially if you have children who need to be fed, who need to be clothed, who need their washing done, you don't have time to grieve in that way. You have to carry on with life. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's what kind of helped you get through it since you had right. my mom, you had my yeah. aunt, and uncle. Yeah. Okay. All of them were helpful. But yes, it's not easy, and it never will be easy. Right, I can imagine. I can imagine. The third topic we're talking about is marriage. And since you have been married before, 
What is some advice you would give to someone getting married? Tolerance. Kindness. Just tolerate each other. The bad and the good. Communicate. Let people know how you feel or how you don't feel. And if you're angry, have to be hungry. Three hundred. <laughs> and then if you if you get to three hundred, your anger has subsided. Oh yeah. That's and good. don't go to bed angry. Why? It's better if you could solve it before and get up in the morning first. And then another thing about marriage is how did how did you meet my grandfather? Well, like, I was sent I got a job who sponsored me coming here and he came from Cuba and we both started on the same time and worked in the OR and we were put together to learn all the ropes and that's how I met. I'd never met a Cuban before and I didn't I know a word of Spanish so my most I could understand was see and no. And he took me to his parents' house and they couldn't speak a word of English. So we had quite a communication problem. But my mother-in-law was very nice and she would show me a fork and say, tenedor, tenedor, cuchillo and cuchara. And I'd get them right. But what messed me up was I could never remember semana and manzana, they sounded to me the same. Manzana is an apple. Is an apple, and semana is a week. Now I know, but I didn't know then. I'd never eaten garlic, so my mother-in-law cooked my food without it. Eventually, I learned to use garlic. But my favorite food that she made was fried chicken. Fried chicken? Why? Fried, because she made it so good. I'd never tasted fried chicken before. Yes, I definitely didn't like black beans. I didn't like what they looked like. But I gradually grew to like all the Cuban food. And eventually I had to cook it. So I cooked. I learned how to cook Cuban food. Now I don't know how to cook British food. Not that there's not all that much variety, but I learned how to cook Cuban food. So that's how I met your grandfather. The last topic we're going to be talking about is the fear of aging. And um, what is the best thing about aging? Well, you're kind of stupid if you fear aging because unfortunately, we all age. The, some, the difference is we all start off at different times. And one of us is going to be older than the other one. But fear of aging, I've never had because I really have never had the time to think about it. You just get there. And it's when you get there, you realize, boy, where did all the time go? Yeah, like time goes by really fast. Yes, and especially after 50, you really roll down the hill fast as you can think. But fear of aging, very, very fortunate. I'm in fairly decent health. And aging has only now started to creep in where I find I'm getting stiff and I'm not so fast. And I get tired. But other than that, aging is nothing to be feared of. I've been very lucky in my life yeah. that I've had good health. Of course. Um, as you get older, is there anything you regret not doing? Or like regret not having somebody, like forgiving somebody or... I've done many things in my life, especially when I was a, I was a child. I was a little bit of a bully. And yes, I regret that. I wish I could go back and say I'm sorry, but it's too late. These people are probably dead. But yes, I think about it and I realize that I was a bit of a bully. Not proud of it, but I'm not a bully anymore. But it was when I was a little girl. I used to pull people's hair ribbons off and do things like that. Yeah. Hair ribbons? Well, like. Thank People you. would have pigtails and I'd pull their hair ribbon or do other things like pull their hat off or throw it over the hedge or something, make them run for it. Mm. I was bad. Well, why would you do that? 
I don't know. Maybe I uh, just was looking for attention. I don't know. I've thought about it often. <laughs> but I don't know why, but I was a bit of a bully. So I don't like bullies. You know, In hindsight, I don't like them. Yeah, because you wouldn't want someone like you know. Bullying my bullied. children, yeah. yeah but children are very cruel to each other. And Especially like nowadays. puppies, they fight with each other. And they don't think about what they're doing. But no, that is my one regret in my life that I shouldn't have bullied some people. It's okay. Yeah, well, no, I can't now do anything can do, about yeah. it. I could just be a better person now. Which you've given back a lot since so you well, were a nurse. You're a nurse. I, mean, I, you... I did my training in Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland. And... As I said, I came here with a job. I had no problem getting a job. And I had always worked in what in Britain is called the theater. But the theater is the OR here. I'd always oh, wow. worked there. But, but the th and it's crazy because the theater here is like a movie theater. Like you go right. to see a movie. But the reason they called it theater is because they had an open where all the students sat far away. And it was like a theater. Yeah. That's why they called it theater. But I worked there and then I came here to the OR and it was different, but I learned and I did that for many years until I switched to children. I worked with preemie babies, which I absolutely loved. And I did about three years in New York and about 20 years here in the NICU. I worked oh. with tiny, tiny babies, and older babies too. And I loved it. That's good. At least you did something you loved and like didn't come here miserable, having no. to... Well, I was always tired when I came home because you would work 12 hours, you came home, and I came home to children. But I always had three or four days off. Yeah, it was worth it. Yeah. And then the last question I have is that, um, what were like some things that like taught you life lessons as you got older? What things, what problems came into your life that gave you life lessons that helped you? Like, like there's always understand. going to be problems. Always going to be problems in your life. Life throws big curveballs. Sometimes you could dodge them. Sometimes you get whacked in the head with them. But there's always, always a light at the end of the tunnel. It, it does improve. Even you think it, you can't possibly improve it. It does get better. You lose people. You, you gain people. It's like God gives you someone on purpose. God yes. takes someone out of your life on purpose. And gives you. He opens a door when he closes the window. Yeah. Well, thank you, Grandma, for You're doing this. You're very welcome. <laughs> I love you. Aww. I love you too, Grandma.